Um, many of you know that Phil has created these little uh, covers for our, I think they're C9 globe for our uh, for our pixels, or in this case here, it's um, a dumb string of. Let me just move the camera of RGB LEDs. And um, what I wanted to do is show you how to um, to basically get a little bit better quality out of them. And it's not Phil's fault; it's just the way 3D printing works because they are actually created layer by layer by layer by layer from the bottom to the top. You do tend to see, now let me see if I can get it with the GoPro. I'm not real sure if I can. I probably won't by the looks of it, but with these, I'm, you might be able to hear it. I'll just sit that there for a sec, move it up to the microphone, and I run my fingernail down. They're basically little ridges. And it's because of the way the 3D printing works, and there's no way of really getting rid of them easily in part of, as part of the printing process without taking much, much longer doing finer cuts. So what I've done is invested in a cheap rice cooker, and everyone's going, rice cooker, why? Well, let me see if I can get this in the shot. I'll move the camera across so I can actually see it. Actually, what I'll do, I'll turn them off. And we'll be able to see the, the shine. Now this one here is the standard um, one straight out of Phil's printer. Then the other two here are actually have been um, basically that the outer surface has been uh, melted and relayed down using acetone. Now it, be, it you can see the shine on them here. It does look to the eye. This one here looks a little bit dull. I think those surface ridges would catch dirt, uh, whereas these ones here, no, there's there's no surface ridges. Now, these have basically just been done about 15, 20 minutes ago, so they may well still be a little bit soft, but the quality from the, uh, from the lights, uh, it's a bit hard to tell with the GoPro here, but the quality out of these does look more even, does look better. Now, these were done with two different settings this one here was done with half a cap full of um, acetone and taken out after about a minute this one here was done much uh, longer and has a slightly better surface now i will show you how to do it so we'll move over now comes the fun bit don't know where to put the gopro okay well what do you need you need something to put the um the covers on you need, in this case, it was a rice cooker from um, Target. This one here, it's only a fairly small one, was $12. So you're not talking a lot of money. This was just a bit of scrap wire I had. You could use a coat hanger. I bent it so that they sit like that. They sit off the ground. That way some, some of the acetone vapour may go up inside them. I'm not sure if it actually will, but anything's better than nothing. And it fits the four on. I'll grab another couple here quite easily and I think I'd be able to make another couple of these and have them so that another one sits here and then here and you could fit a few more um, than just the one in this little metal tin. Now when you get the rice cooker make sure, I have seen a couple that are plastic, make sure that it's not plastic, make sure you get a metal one, this is only aluminium but good enough for what we want. Uh, the reason plastic, acetone melts plastic or some plastics, um, so just be careful. And yes, I have seen the um, an acetone. Uh, I have seen a plastic rice cooker. We got got one inside, so I don't use it. Um, now, what I'm going to do is put these in the bottom of the rice cooker. Now, that's made high enough so that the lid actually does sit on there, and surprisingly enough, doesn't quite touch the top. You, they're, they're missing by maybe a centimetre or so. Uh, although you can't tell from the GoPro, it looks like they are touching. We also need acetone. Uh, this one here uh, I got from Bunnings. It's not that expensive. Now, be warned. See that? It does say flammable, and this stuff is flammable. Now, for this one, I'm going to use one capful of this, this digger's acetone. So I'm just going to pour one capful. While the rice cooker is cold, I'll just 
gently pour that down the side so that it doesn't drip on top of any of the um, of the covers. Put the lid on, turn the power on. Now before I do that, I'm just going to move the acetone away. Probably not there, that'll be better. And we're going to turn it on. Now comes the fun bit. It takes about a minute or so to, um, to actually boil off. I'll move the GoPro over so we can see it. And a whole lot of nothing's happening. Okay, you can start to see a little bit of, maybe a little bit of bubbling and movement of the acetone. Okay, it's starting to bubble loom now, we can see. Now, while you're doing this, no naked flames, um, well-ventilated area. I've got the shed doors up behind me, um, just to make it a little bit safer, because this stuff, especially as a vapour, is extremely, extremely volatile and will catch fire. Okay, now it's starting to boil. Now, I think that one cap would probably be enough to do a lot more than the four um, covers, but at the moment that um, seems to be the ideal volume for this little rice cooker. Maybe a fraction more, but um, seems to be working. Now, you might see it, oh, you can see it in the GoPro, um, see how it's starting to actually form a vapour on the top here. That means it's the vapour's moved up, it's condensing in there, and now it'll start to actually condense on the outside of your um, covers. And that's what you want, because that's going to melt the cover or the surface layer and um, give you that nice glossy finish. Now, what I did last time, I actually waited about a minute and a half. Hang on, I've got it written down there. One minute and 20 seconds after all the acetone had evaporated, which is oh, pretty much about now. There's a little tiny bit left in the bottom. And now it's basically condensing, running back down, flashing back off, so you're maintaining that vapour. Now, we might be able to actually see on, no, not with the GoPro real well, but that one, that back one here is actually starting to get quite glossy to the eye, which means the surface is actually becoming a little bit more smoother. This one here as well. So there is actually acetone on the surface of those. Um, and it's slowly melting. Now, gravity is going to help uh, basically mould those layers together. I'm not sure what this does to strength, so that's why I'm doing a few of them to, um, to see how we go. Now, I'm not sure. I should have probably noted the time. We'll give it another, say, 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds. Now it's actually getting quite warm. I'll turn the heat off. It's starting to look quite nice to the eye. You mightn't pick it real well with the um, with the GoPro. I'll take the lid off. Right. Oh, bit warm. Now, what you need in terms of tools oh, is don't breathe the acetone vapour in. We're going to lift that up. Now, ideally, you will put this in an area that is dust free because the surface of this is still very, very, very soft. In fact, it's quite tacky. One thing I have noticed is the surface here at the top tends to get a little bit worse. It does on horizontal surfaces. Maybe they need a little sand down. I'm not real sure afterwards, but um, they're going outside. They're on Christmas lights. Um, I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Uh, but maybe a little tidy up afterwards of that surface there could help uh, with longevity more than anything. Okay, so 
Well, now um, I, I would normally leave these for maybe an hour or two um, to basically harden the surface. And with luck, you'll end up with some nice smooth surfaces like these. And um, yeah, they, they do look good. You know, there's the standard LED. From a distance, I'll just turn the light out and see how we go. To me, in, in a tree or in a, um, an area, they give off a much nicer light than a little light, point light source. Uh, I'm going to put these on a number of my items this year uh, and then probably expand them after I work out how long they're going to last. What I intend to do with these ones here from Phil um, is I'm going to put some of these ones that have been acetone smooth some of the ones that come standard, which you know, probably turn the light back on. And I'm also going to spray a few of them with a stuff that Ben gave me last year, uh, which is basically a UV coating or UV protectant. They um, should, they're actually surface is hard, but I'll let them harden up. Uh, that surface, uh, that, that spray should Give me another year or two with, um, you can see actually how quite smooth in terms of, you know, you can see the glare off the light above. Um, and if I just quickly grab one of the, the standard ones, well, there is none of that. They're a very matte finish. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that'll last with the UV coating. will last a little bit longer um, because these aren't an expensive item to buy. I'm not sure what Phil's selling them for, but I would expect them to be probably under the 50 cent mark. Um, knowing how much time and effort goes into them, there's, there's um, the material cost is only one thing. There's a lot of time goes into these. So uh, at 50 cents each, that'd be ideal. And I think if, um, if you guys considered doing this just to get that little bit extra life, um, I'll be doing some testing over the next few months to see how long they're going to last outside and also how strong they are. Uh, I know we've broken a few of them at minis, so um, if you do crush them, they do crush, or do kneel on them, they do crush. So the idea will be just to uh, see how they go. Does this make them any stronger? Does it make them weaker? Um, does it make it actually more prone to UV? I'm not sure. So we'll give it a go and see how things go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.